2023 Cadillac Lyrique 450e First Test. The electric SUV as reset button. The 2023 Cadillac Lyrique represents an important reset for the storied American luxury brand. After a resurgence around the turn of the millennium that started with the art and science design Cadillac CTS and Escalade and through a period that ended with the demise of the CTS V Sport Wagon, Cadillac was on a roll. But it then squandered its momentum, seeding ground as a cool status symbol to arch nemesis Lincoln and upstarts like Tesla. The industry-wide pivot to electrification is a chance for the brand to wipe the slate clean, and the 2023 Cadillac Lyrique 450e is the first fruit of that labor. But is it another CTS, or is Caddy having another ELR or CT6 moment? We're about to find out. What makes the Cadillac Lyrique tick? Cadillac's association with General Motors has often been more of a curse than a blessing resulting in sport sedans with unrefined truck motors and or switchgear shared with $20,000 Chevrolets. In the Larique's case, however, the association is no curse. The Larique rides on GM's new bleeding-edge modular Ultium electric vehicle platform, which allowed Cadillac designers the freedom to pin a midsize SUV that somehow manages to recall the mid-century modern greats of Cadillac's post-war years while also looking contemporary and visionary. Propelling our Larique 450e debut edition test car and its long dash to axle ratio and camback rear end as a rear mounted motor good for 340 horsepower and 325 pound feet of torque, backed by a quick charging 102 kWh battery pack. The EPA says the Larique should be able to cover 312 miles on a charge, and the 190 kW peak rate helps ensure you aren't spending much time tethered to a public charger when necessary. A dual-motor all-wheel drive Larique is also planned. You can get the full details of the rest of the Larique package, including its passive suspension system, by checking out our first drive here. How fast is the Larique? With just a single, modestly powerful motor, we weren't expecting Tesla Model Y performance. Uh, performance out of our rear-drive Larique test vehicle, yet it's still impressed. The Larique zipped from 0 to 60 miles per hour in just 5.7 seconds and through the quarter mile in a respectable 14.2 seconds at 100.5 miles per hour. That's significantly slower than many electric SUVs in the segment, most of which offer dual-motor all-wheel drive as standard, including the slowest Model Y we've tested which needed 4.1 seconds to 60 miles per hour and a 12.4 second quarter mile at 114.8 miles per hour. Yet it's as quick or quicker than many of its gas-powered contemporaries, including the Lincoln Nautilus, Genesis GV80, and Mercedes-Benz GLE. And although its 134-foot 60-0 mph performance leaves us a little wanting, the Larique manages a respectable 27.2 second figure 8 lap while averaging 0.64 grams. Not bad considering its 5,654 pound curb weight. Is the Larique better on the road? The Larique drives wonderfully out in the real world. Unlike the violent rip your face off acceleration you get in many of its EV competitors, the Larique is tuned more conservatively in many ways mimicking how a big, understressed V8 performs. Dip into the throttle and you get one big tidal wave of torque that you can surf long past any legal speed limit in this country. The throttle pedal is well damped too, said associate editor Duncan Brady. EVs with instant torque tend to expose less smooth driving habits, but the relaxed response in the default tour mode makes it easy to drive smoothly. Those looking for more thrills, Fret not, as dual motor and V versions ought to pack more than 500 horsepower. The Larique's brakes are tuned well, too. The one-pedal driving mode is smooth and perfectly calibrated, allowing you to come to a complete stop, and should you ever need more braking power, pulling the paddle on the left side of the steering wheel results in even more regenerative deceleration. Those who prefer to brake the old-fashioned way will also find lots to like as the pedal feels natural and offers plenty of bite. Contemporary high-end Cadillacs are known for their fine ride quality thanks to the wide use of Magnaride dampers, 
but the Lyric makes do with a more traditional setup using what GM calls passive plus frequency selective dampers. As far as our finely tuned auto journalist butts are concerned, the likely cheaper passive dampers are nearly as good as the fancy magnetoriological ones. The Lyric floats over all but the harshest impacts, without actually becoming floaty, as did many of its predecessors. Also, like many of its mid-20th century forerunners, the Lyric isn't overtly sporty, but it handles competently. Put it this way, the Lyric won't leave you white-knuckling on a curvy road, but it also won't ever be mistaken for Cadillac's finely tuned V-performance models, either. Inside the Cadillac Lyric, that's just as well because it's worth slowing down for a beat and appreciating the Lyric's interior. For the first time in a Cadillac this millennium, the Lyric features bespoke switchgear and hardware not shared with lesser Buicks, Chevrolets, or GMCs. The new controls make a great impression. They're beautifully weighted, Brady said. The real metal and heavyweight feel of the knobs remind me of Bentley. These are not things I anticipated would stand out in Cadillac's new EV, considering how many of the brand's cars share controls with other GM stuff. More than just looking good. The Lyric is surprisingly functional, too, with hidden storage, such as the drawer lined with blue leather in the center stack, comfortable front seats, and an incredibly spacious back seat and trunk. Still, there's some obvious room for improvement. For starters, Cadillac's infotainment system shows much promise. The curved displays and its Google Maps integration are particularly great, but the UX doesn't make good use of the space, displaying blocks of apps that are difficult to navigate with the control knob. Similarly, the door handles appear to have been engineered in virtual space. Getting into the car requires you first press the door handle, which is really just a button masquerading as a handle, to get the latch to release and then grab onto a separate handle hidden in the window trim to pull the doors open, unless you're getting in back, as there aren't any grab points back there. The Lyric, despite being rear drive in this test car's case, also lacks the frunk that's become so common on EVs. On the worrying side of the ledger, we experienced build quality issues with our early production Lyric test vehicle. The charging port cover flapped in the breeze, the rearview mirror vibrated subtly at highway speeds, and a handful of inconsistent panel gaps in the interior distracted from the otherwise beautifully furnished cabin. And although the hardware for it comes standard, our Lyric also didn't have GM's excellent Super Cruise Advanced Driver Assist system due to the ongoing semiconductor chip shortage. Cadillac says owners will be able to add it at a later date with a software update and an indeterminate subscription fee. Is the Lyric worth it? Despite the build issues, though, the Lyric still feels like a striking value at its $62,990 base and as tested prices. Stellar to look at, good to drive, and generally easy to live with, the 2023 Cadillac Lyric 450e Debut Edition provides both a viable and enticing path forward for the brand as we rapidly approach the middle of the 21st century. Second chances are rare. The Lyric proves that Cadillac isn't wasting one.